Welcome to this episode of the OnTrack Whiteboard Series. My name is Vince Mazur, and I'm a product marketing engineer here at Altium. Today we're going to talk about component lifecycle. There's nothing more frustrating than to be near release or even have your product in production and wanting to go back for another run and find out that components in your design are near the end of life or not even available. Wouldn't it be helpful to know at the beginning when you did the design that you were able to pick a component that was at the beginning of its life cycle and you didn't run into these problems later. It's a real challenge. I'm sure you all can relate. We've all run into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about component life cycle. Now this graph that we see here that we will put the reference for this graph uh, in the resources section below the video. This graph is the normalized component life cycle. It's very similar to a bell curve and we're going to go through each of the steps of a typical life cycle of a component. Now the time is going to vary. That's going to vary on what market you're in. For instance, if the component is widely used in the cell phone market, which is you know spinning every six months, you, you're going to have a shorter time window for this entire life cycle. It depends on the component. So this is certainly a variable. If you're in a situation like automotive, it might be a longer life cycle. Military, even longer life cycle. So it depends on your market, how you use this data, and what this time really means. So now that we have that mentioned, let's go ahead and talk about the different phases. The first phase here uh, in one is the pre-release phase. Now this is typified by the availability of preliminary data sheets. This is an exciting time as a designer. It also can be a very risky time because you're able to get access to a component that's just on its way to being introduced. You might get some initial samples. You're not only getting really nice capability, but you're also getting something at the beginning of the life cycle. Most likely you're going to have years. I mean, it's not uncommon, for instance, to pick out a microcontroller and be able to live with that architecture for a decade or two because of the interchangeability of newer products within the footprint. So it's an exciting time. But one time I read this preliminary data sheet and we're using the clock on a microcontroller to to be the source for the baud rate generator for serial data transmission. So we were transmitting off of the board to external systems. And the preliminary spec said that we'd be within 1%, which we, since we were using the system clock, that should be no problem. We went to production. We had a quantity of these boards made. And when the real spec came out, they expanded it. I believe it was close to 10%. So when we output the characters, it came up as gibberish. We drilled down. We found out that our clock was way off. And that's, that's an example of the risk of using something that's at the earlier part of the, the life cycle. And again, I, I can't emphasize more that these data sheets truly are preliminary. They make it very, very plain in there that they are preliminary and subject to change but I thought I would share that story. The good news is, is that because we had a, another oscillator on there, a crystal oscillator, we actually, at boot time, we were able to measure that internal clock, adjust it and compensate it. There was a tuning mechanism and we were able to get it to work, but it was a little frightening there for a while. So that's pre-release. Again, exciting time, potentially risky time. The second phase, as the the product becomes more mature, closer to release, data sheets uh, formalizing and, and solidifying is recommended for new designs. This is certainly the most conservative entry into a new product. It's recommended for new designs and you're able to go forward from that. In this area here, the largest area of the life cycle, that's volume production. That's uh, also typified by a very mature product. It's widely used. It's, it's just widely used out in the marketplace. There's a lot of colleagues, designers, companies, industry uh, talk about it, and it's in its, in its mature phase. Now, as that becomes near the end in the phase four here, this is when we start sloping down. The final descent, if you will, of the product life cycle, component life cycle in this case. 
And as you start sloping down, that's referred to as not recommended for new design. And, and you'll, you'll, you can see warnings for this in some software that will give you insight. It's, it's not recommended for a new design. It's not the biggest deal if you do use it and if it's the only component of its type, but if there is a suitable replacement or alternative that's earlier in its life cycle, it's highly recommended that you use that. As we go further towards end of life, which is phase five here, as we approach what we call the zone of obsolescence, that's this red area here, the zone of obsolescence, the device is going into end of life. And, and generally when end of life is announced, and we'll talk about that more later, uh, they will give you the opportunity to make a last time buy. That's when you can look at your forward production and see, make the decision, do I want to replace or do I want to make a last time buy that will, will cover me for additional time. And then finally, the component in this area goes obsolete. It goes obsolete and it's no longer offered. So let's talk about a couple of things that the industry has put in place for this dynamic because obsolescence is really rearing its, its head as an issue uh, these days in electronics design quite a bit. Uh, if you do, uh, if you search on Google for on the topic, you're going to see a lot of uh, challenging and alarming articles that discuss, you know, obsolescence. The industry foresaw this quite a while ago, and they came up with some industry standards, uh, specifically JEDEC, and we'll have links to those uh, website uh, links below to the JEDEC standards. But they, they introduced a standard that governed product change notices. They also introduced a standard that governed product discontinuance, discontinuance notices. Now, product change notice can be as something as simple as, hey, the product used to be made here, now it's being made at this location or fab. It can be something like, well, it was uh, you know, a, a, lead proce a leaded process, now we're moving to a lead-free lead process. Uh, I've seen cases where the, the type of the plastic used in the molding changed that initiated a product change notice. A product change notice can also include a reference to a product discontinuous discontinuance notice that, that is talking end of life. But product change notices are important to take to, to keep track of, uh, particularly with silicon devices. It's not uncommon for I know of a situation where a RAM chip, uh, a die shrink was performed on the on the on the chip, and as a result, it wouldn't work in, in our product because the specs were just a little bit off and we were near the edge of the timing window. The other thing, like I mentioned, is a product discontinuation notice. This is basically saying, hey, we're, the manufacturer is announcing that they're going to they're gonna discontinue this. They're going to they're gonna list some last time buy opportunities along with delivery schedules as that transitions into end of life. So these are two important aspects. So what can you do today to help yourself deal with component obsolescence. One is you can use lifecycle aware capability that's inf infused into your design environment. Wouldn't it be really nice if when you're selecting a part, you can see right then and there whether this is end of life, whether it's good to go, where it is in its life cycle. And there are tools out there that offer that capability. You can also go to, this was something new that I learned in preparing for this is many Semiconductor vendors allow you to register with your email address and by selecting specific parts so that you're put on a list that if there are any changes with that device or those devices, you'll be notified. So uh, it's useful to sign up for those and you can do that. There's no cost and I recommend that you use a specific email for that so that you really have hyphen visibility if you start seeing notices relating to that. So sign up for those today for your critical devices and uh, we'll put a couple of links below the video uh, for some of the more common manufacturers. It's also helpful to choose alternate part sources to guard against obsolescence. So in general, if, you're, if you need a specific diode that has a, a specific um, reverse you know, current uh, rating, 
uh, try to choose and find several of them uh, just in case. And of course, you'll be able to rank which one you, you prefer. But it, the more alternatives you have, the, the more resilient your design will be against these types of changes. You also want to, again, for all of your parts, you know, some parts are, are maybe not as critical as others, but for your important parts, get to know the vendor a little bit. Try to talk to local sales and FAE resources. Find out what their history is as far as the life cycle of their parts. That's a big criteria when selecting some of these devices like microcontrollers and processors where there's considerable investment in software. Uh, sometimes it's not always about performance. A lot of times it's about availability and longevity of that. And again, that's a decision that's made based on the type of, of industry you're designing for. So those are steps that you can take now. That's all I wanted to cover today. I uh, hope that it's been useful, and I'd like to invite you, uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We'd also appreciate it if you would, you would like and, and, and share uh, this video with others so that they, they can find the content. And if you find this content useful on a recurring basis, we certainly would want to invite you to subscribe as well. I certainly appreciate your time today. Have a super day.